This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the ARCHICAD User Group webinar series for 2022. If you don't already know me, my name is Matthew Phillips. I am the Western Cape representative for Graphisoft SA, and I'm going to be your host and moderator during this session. On today's topic, um, we're going to go into a little bit more about these user group webinars, uh, who should attend, when they take place, and why a user would want to join. Next, I'll introduce our presenter and allow him to take you through his presentation. Once he is done with his presentation, there will be a quick Q&A session where attendees are welcome to ask the presenter any questions relevant to the topic. Thereafter, we'll finish off with some closing remarks before ending this month's webinar. Every webinar will be recorded and the recording will be made available on our website, which is www.archicad.co.za. During the Q&A session, please type out your question and direct it to everyone. Please re be respectful of others and remain muted unless you are asking a question. Please also try to stay on topic during these sessions. If not, I'll quickly jump on and assist with getting us back on track. And if you have any suggestions or questions, you're welcome to send them through to me on my email address, which is sales the number one at archicad.co.za. We at Graphisoft SA wanted to improve the voice of the Archicad community here in South Africa and thought it best to restart the user group meetings to better engage with our users. After all, building community creates unity. These webinars will be focused on content which users will find relevant to improving their workflows or upskill their knowledge. The focus is on what you as the users want to see or learn about. So who should attend? Anyone that uses ARCHICAD uh, or is interested in learning more about what ARCHICAD can do or collaborate with. These webinars will take place once a month on the last Tuesday of every month, except for January and December. They'll be an hour in length and we'll do our best to adhere to these times. Why would you want to attend? To build community here in South Africa and to grow your knowledge and potentially network. During the Q&A session, I'll manage and direct any questions. Without any further delay, let me introduce our presenter, Brent Godfrey from Building Point SA. He will be giving us a short presentation on how to add more value to your 3D design by taking it into the field as mixed reality. Over to you, Brent. Thanks, Matthew. Uh, thanks to Graphisoft. Thanks for inviting me to present at this um, on on your, your webinar series. Um, yeah, as Matthew said, I'm Brent. I'm from a company called Building Point uh, SA. And we're going to be, I'm the construction technology manager based down here in, um, uh, in Cape Town. And I want to speak to you a bit about um, augmented mixed reality, um, about utilizing, you know, everybody on this group is probably all already familiar working with, um, in, in 3D and, and in BIM processes, you know, using soft, uh, things like ARCHICAD. Um, and there's been a lot of work in the office, and I think this is just about you know, adding extra value to all that effort that you put into creating your, your highly detailed ARCHICAD models, and now you can take that the, those models, taking them out to site in the form of augmented or mixed reality, and just adding a whole lot more value to the whole design, build, construct sort of uh, value chain with all that, with that, the information that you've, you've already done. So let me just sorry, get back to here. So just to quickly explain very shortly who, who we are. So we are, um, is, I'm from Building Point. We, we are part of the Optron group, which is, you might, may have heard of Trimble. Um, Trimble, uh, op, the Optron group have been the regional partner supplying the Trimble positioning solutions throughout Sub-Saharan Africa for 30 years. Probably better known for our geospatial, the survey side, those guys sitting on site with their yellow boxes, busy doing setting out. Um, we have a new division building point, SA, which represents the Trimble's building portfolio, which is the design, build, operate side of things. 
um, it, within construction. Um, we cover architecture, structures, uh, and, and the general contractors and have sort of product applicable products in each of those sort of each of those verticals and also Trimble connect very well across all of those disciplines as well, bringing them together. Um, Trimble like to call it the connected construction as you know, with Trimble having all the hardware solutions as well as software solutions, that synergy of design to field and field to or design to, to, to yeah, to the field and then the field back to the offices um, works really well. Um, I just want to play a very, very short video um, just on, uh, I was going to mute myself before I play it, um, just, which just gives you an idea of the concept of Trimble's connected construction, what, what we're about. What does it take to navigate change, to recognize industry barriers and push through them? Unifying teams and technologies across the entire construction life cycle. What does it take to have every stakeholder on the same page, whether or not they're ever in the same place, with the right data at the right time to drive the right decisions? It takes the power to deliver, to boost productivity, improve quality, to champion sustainability, connecting the people, the processes, and the data through every phase of a project. It takes absolute confidence from Trimble Connected Construction to embrace change and drive digital transformation, to root out inefficiencies and exploit opportunities accelerating the pace of your success, no matter what the future holds. Trimble Connected Construction. Deliver with confidence. Okay, that's my sales pitch over. Um, let's move on to the presentation. The good stuff and that's going to be Trimble's um, mixed reality. So if I go to, if we look at Trimble's, um, start with Trimble's mission statement, um, I think being Trimble is transforming the way the world works by delivering products and services that connect the physical and digital worlds. Now, I think of any Trimble solution that better represents uh, this purpose with our mixed reality tools. We're not only connecting the physical and digital worlds, uh, but we're beginning to seamlessly merge digital project data with a physical site that, it, that surrounds us, overlaid immersive content um that in in context on site so what what the problem we're setting out to solve with with mixed reality we, we describe as the data disconnect so a huge amount of time and effort and ultimately money are invested in the design phase of a project in highly detailed coordinate th coordinated 3d models representing uh, the structure which has to be built and far too often it comes to realizing this design intent on site the digital data environment to be to put in another way teams are having to refer to two-dimensional data and interpret 3d designs from flat drawings in order to realize a three-dimensional building unfortunately critical details can get lost in translation and mistakes are made financial impact uh, being not only a lack of return on your digital investment but also the downstream costs of ripping out and reworking and associated delays to the program and other things when we talk about like really detail we talk about the detail of stuff uh, and i think of archicad there's um 
a quite a sort of liken Archicad to to what Trimble has a Trimble Tech. I know Archicad is really really powerful at sort of delivering that fine detail of um, uh, you know of objects and components, and you can drill really down down really into the to, to the finer things of things. And you, uh, you know if you're able to uh, communicate that better in 3D on site, and people can really understand why there needs to be another little step in their weather step while they're busy casting, you know, casting the concrete. By taking your your Archicad model and, and really visualizing it in place, it really does help that sort of data the disconnect of communication from the uh, from your design to the field. So by implementing this Trimble mixed reality on site, we're bridging this gap between the office and the field and ensuring that you know the investment that you've uh, that you've put into your um, into your office uh, design is is realized throughout the whole project life cycle so not just during the coordination or construction but it can be right through to delivery and operation so if we have I just want to briefly explain sort of the explanation of explain Trimble's mixed reality portfolio. So Trimble Connect is our cloud-based common data environment and this allows the sharing of project data in virtually any format for ease of access for anyone connected with the project. So from Archicad you would export an IFC file and that would be uploaded to Trimble Connect um, which is this cloud-based common data environment. So working from the left, Trimble Connect, uh, as standard, can be deployed on a desktop, uh, web, or mobile, and offers the traditional 3D model viewing and BIM tools via 2D two-dimensional display via your, your computer screen. Then we've got Connect AR, so augmented reality. This is one-to-one -one scale model viewing in context with the project site via an Android or iOS device and it's our entry point to mixed reality for use on uh, construction sites. Then we move on to connect mixed reality. And now this is our ultimate visualization tool. So it's us using Trimble's site certified version of Microsoft HoloLens 2 to immerse the user with holographic data whilst keeping their hands free for other work on site, for other site tasks. So if we start, we're going to go through from left to right. Again, if we just look a bit more at what Trimble Connect is, the purpose of Trimble Connect is to democratize project data. So making it accessible to any project stakeholder without the need for any dedicated or specialist hardware no, for software training. So Trimble Connect can be accessed on virtually any device. So mobile, tablet, browser, as well as virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality visualization support, making it really, really versatile sort of common data environment. And importantly, Trimble Connect doesn't only support proprietary formats, but virtually any file type you like, uh, you're likely to encounter during the construction project, whether that be models, drawings, or even scan point clouds can all be used within Trimble Connect. Um, yeah. Now, Trimble Connect, Trimble Connect AR, this is the augmented reality. This is the easiest way to begin implementing mixed reality technology onto your projects. It's a, it's a bring your own device. It essentially runs on what, what's already on your pocket for the operative on site. There's virtually no learning curve. Loading and placing of your models is simple. It's scanning a QR code, typically attached to a, to a structural element of the building. Once the data is placed, the model layers can be navigated, isolated to optimize the visualization. And you can use simple sliders to control the model's transparency and even take cross sections through, through the model. The ability to explore the model on one-to-one -one scale in real time and in context represents a step change in effectiveness versus interpreting models or drawings using traditional methods. So the app has been developed to focus on three specific workflows in the project phase. So coordination, the pre-construction phase, uh, for progress monitoring and verification during the construction phase, 
and then for post-construction QA and QC as well. Now the augmented reality, how it works on, on your mobile device or indoors, it's very, it, you know, the, it, you say it's a bring your own device, depending on what technology is available on the device. If you're using one of the latest iPhones and, and tablets that have got the built-in LiDAR, it'll access that technology and it will use that technology to be able to keep the image stable, um, any Android device, AR um, compatible device, um, it will It'll use the camera, it uses the phones, IMUs, but those are better suited to indoor, feature-rich type environments. But now you also, we have another augmented reality solution. So what happens when you're outside, you're out in the field, you're wanting to present your uh, the concept of your, of your design, uh, it's not a feature-rich environment. We also, then we can combine augmented reality with GNSS, GPS, um, units. So in this picture you see what's called a Trimble Sight Vision unit. Um, there's your, bring your own, your, your, your phone clipped onto, it's a small little thing, clips it, hold it in your hand. You've got centimeter accurate GPS um, positioning. So your model is, is positioned to within centimeter accuracy. It's got EDMs on it um, to be able to take measurements between virtual and real um, and, and the real environment. It's just some sort of examples of, of what you would use it for. So uh, if you've got utilities data, for example, through the means of like capturing, if you had ground penetrating radar survey done, or, um, you can show the features in the field using this augmented reality. There's a pit view function, which enables you to vert, to see, because the, the, the unit is also measuring where the ground is. It's, you, you can see where, see objects in context below the ground. Um, This was just an example of using a, you know, just to see where the effective area of a street light is. So you can place your street lamp in any place, and obviously the color colors represent the um, where the um, the effectiveness the, in, in form of a heat map of, of where the light would be brightest. Uh, good for visualizing uh, pre-construction. Um, Developments, you can visualize, prop, you know, put your property, it doesn't always have to be 3D data. If you've got 2D data, you can visualize where your property boundaries, those type of things are. Um, and now this is also just a nice little example that we did, a demonstration we did down in the Cape, where it was for, it was for an architect. And as you can see, th there's nothing on the site, but now we're looking, this is a screen recording from the device. Now we have in context his design in place in you know in the right place. Now what what was important for this um, for this architect was getting the whole de because of the location the whole design was around views. It was based in a very beautiful part of, of the of the Western Cape where views out of the wind the whole layout of the house was designed around being able to see the silhouette. Of the of the mountain ranges, so from certain locations, from you know they needed to be very, very good sort of like for example here now now the building's not there, but now I can be looking out the window and I can very clearly see exactly how where that silhouette line sits when I'm sitting down on my chair looking out the window of my um, uh, of my house. So the architecture was ideal for for visualizing these um, the the designs. Um, obviously, before this is now a em completely empty site. So I mean, they had dropped the one part of this this house completely with all the development, just so that we could they could get these silhouette lines. Now it also integrates into some surveyors' tools, and the surveyor was also very excited about it because now he could interact with an architect on on a different level, understanding what his requirements were. And the owner who was present there, he was just blown away. He was so excited that this was, you know, he could see his house. It wasn't there yet, but it just gave him such a great you know, level of excitement about what was coming. And having the architect and the owner present on site at the same time, and you could see the architects also, you know, he was very excited about what was, you know, what he had designed to see his to see his client's reaction to what he had designed, and it was a yeah, it's a great way of sharing your design intent um, with uh, with people.
So if we look now, we're going to move into Trimble Connect um, Mixed Reality. Now this represents the ultimate evolution from working with paper, working with drawings on paper. So it's a heads up, hands free, immersive. I don't know if you guys, if what you can see, but I mean, this is me got one. I don't know if you can see my what my picture in, in, in your view, but it's a. Uh, You sort of it's it's totally hands free, um, and you can seemingly merge the digital content with with an operative surroundings or display BIM data basically in thin air right at my fingertips. My operation, my, my hands are, are um, operate the, the the hologram. It even has remote collaboration possibilities um, with this device. Where things get really more ex exciting as the user experience can be captured as video or streamed live uh, to off-site stakeholders. Being head mounted, the holographic display technology offers improved safety uh, due to the user's vision not being distracted or obstructed um, and offering additional use cases where work can be carried out simultaneously without the need to pause and go back to tablets or drawings or interpret what to do next. In fact, off-site assembly of prefabricated modules and components is where we've seen uh, some of some really big wins with the use of this Trimble mixed reality, where you bring in 4D sequencing uh, functionality of Trimble Connect, which means you can create a one-to-one -one scale step-by-step -step three-dimensional assembly guard and basically eliminating the opportunities for errors working with complex designs. So just a quick bit about the actual hardware itself. Um, so Trimble has partnered exclusively with Microsoft to develop the only SART certified solution for HoloLens 2 built specifically for the construction industry. And this, that's, this is a PXR10. So if you're not familiar with the HoloLens 2, it's a mixed reality headset, which bundles a number of cutting edge technologies. It's got LiDAR, it has eye tracking, it has hand tra tracking, uh, holographic waveguide display. And they merge digital content with the user's physical surroundings without disconnecting them from the environment or obstructing their view. Uh, the XR10 we've incorporated with Microsoft HoloLens to, to a fully certified hard hat use of, for use in safety controlled environments. The visor is um, impact protection standard, so um, there's no need to wear additional eye protection. And the audio has been upgraded with a custom bone conduction headset for crystal clear sound even in the noisiest of environments. So on that sound, as part of the development with the XR10, Trimble recognized the need to optimize the audio for construction purposes. So they partnered with the uh, company Mobulus Labs to come up with a solution. So the Mobi WAN headset uses this bone conduction technology. It's probably, I'm not sure if there's something you've experienced before. But essentially, it means that the sound is transmitted via the bones in your skull, which means even in really noisy environments, even with ear protection on, you get crystal clear audio. As you can see in the in the image, the Bluetooth receiver sits on the hard hat suspension and the pads sit just behind, these little pads sit just behind um, the wearer's ears. So I just want to, we've talked about all these, diff these devices, I just want to walk you through an example what the user experience is like a little video of what it what what it's like wearing the headset what you what you typically would experience this is just an example of our of our office in Durban and um, what we did we scanned it with our Trimble X7 laser scanner uh, yeah great scanner full infield registration um, yeah, onboard color, export it directly to industry standard format, so no need for any office software. I can export directly from my scanner to an E57 file for bringing into Archicad or RCP to Autodesk directly from the scanner. And then you would do your as-built model, either in Archicad or whatever your uh, weapon of choice is, 
And that model is then uploaded to Trimble Connect, a common data environment we talked about. Now, on site, for example, your contractor, he's got his, um, his XR10. He takes his XR10, his hard hat connects to Trimble Connect, and he loads that same, your design model. And uh, this is just his experience of the model. He just, you can place the model on the floor. He can physically interact with it. Now that's the, um, you know, that, that's the office model. You can pick it up, move it, scale it, grab it with your hands. Um, you can, it really is like, it's a, almost a physical object within your environment. What's really nice is actually the, being, the, the ease of being able to place it by the use by making use of QR codes. So placing QR codes in the in the model, you just walk, literally you just walk up to the, you look at the QR code and there your model, you suddenly immersed one-to-one -one scale in your environment, um, placed you know, everything in the right place to scale. Um, and you can start interacting with it. You can start taking measurements you, between um, the, the virtual, uh, your virtual elements. You can even start make measurements between um, virtual and real elements. So actually objects in the real world and your virtual elements. Um, as you can see, it's just uh, using your hands as your, you know, your menus are, uh, the user experience with this device is, is fantastic. Now, if we look at the Connect AI on the same and same environment. Now this is this is use on the mobile phone. Same QR code, same Trimble Connect project, just from a different different platform. From your phone, go onto Trimble Connect, download the model you're interested in. Go up to the same QR codes. Um, the the placement method's slightly different. You just have to rotate your phone a bit around the um, around the QR code just for it to because it also uses a lot of image tracking as well, just to get a bit of context of your environment. And then again, there's your model, one-to-one -one scale, immer you're immersed, well, you're not quite immersed into it, so augmented on your, on, your, on your device in front of you. Um, got the ability to just change the transparency um, of, of your um, virtual environment, so you can you know, see, see where the virtual and the real interact. Then the whole concept behind this is all about, you know, from we said, we said it's connected construction. It's all about better communication. That's why we're doing this. It's not just to see, to play video games. So here, for example, we've identified a problem. What we can do directly from the device, we can create what's called a to-do, a task, like in a common data environment that you do. So this would be a probably a non-conformance or, or an RFR. And all the other stakeholders who are on the project, they would, you know, we can... Now create this, what they call it to do, give it a priority, assign it to a specific person. And then that to do, for example, now it's sent to the designer, maybe sitting somewhere in Cape Town. Designer, he gets an email, says a task has been sent to you, um, clicks, on his, clicks on his mail, goes to the task, and then he will navigate to what you saw on site. He can start to make any sort of design uh, changes or make any you know, um, suggestions, um, and then update the update it to do, update it to complete, or update it to fifty percent complete, or reassign it to somebody else, or give it a different end by date or a due by date, attach different other files, and so it's a it's a document management system for clash detection, for yeah, you know, for it does. Lots of, um, you know, loads of different things that are, you would expect from a common data environment. So that's just sort of the workflow of how we see, you know, where, where it's being utilized on its own. But, you know, yeah, it's just a, a quick look at at what's what's next. How, how, it, how Trimble, when we talk about the connected construction, how they integrating it with other tools. It's now becoming, now this is what you would typically see a, a land surveyor on site with this, as I said, you know, this is where Trimble come from, the yellow boxes on site, the, the guys busy doing their setting out. Now traditionally they've got these robotic total stations and they would have a tablet linked to a pole. 
no, that it's no longer there. He, he's operating it from a headset. He's got a heads-up display of his design. Um, there's no questioning where you need to go to go to your next layout point. There's a there's a bright light shining down. Um, you you walk over to put your pole in it. So you know with this field link mixed reality, we can achieve millimeter precision layout direct from the model and drawing data whilst providing the user with the, like the greatest possible context and understanding of their data. So by combining these technologies, we're making these tasks faster, easier, especially for inexperienced operators to complete these tasks error-free. So we're eliminating more opportunities for mistakes and incurring additional costs and, and delays. So there's just there's a lot of you know we say talk about Trimble's connected construction that, and this is just some of it. They're also integrating it with machine control, so operators and graders are now also being able to visualize their context in mixed reality. And you're going to see a lot more integration of this mixed reality uh, with with other things within the construction and the, the design and construction space. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it from me. Um, as far on my presentation on the mixed reality side of things. Um, if you would like to find out more about Building Point, these are our social media um, places to, to follow us. Um, if you have any questions and you would like to contact me directly, please take a, a screenshot of, of this uh, slide. Um, I'm more than happy to to, to assist. Also, if you've got any demonstrations, you want to, anything you, you've seen, you want to maybe try it, get it implemented on one of your projects or sites, you're not too sure about it, please give us a shout. We're more than happy to come to your sites, um, do some some test cases for you. Um, yeah, look forward to to hearing from you guys. So, you know, any any if there are any questions from any of the partici oh, participants, please. Uh, Oh, please fire away. Thanks, Brent. Thanks so much. I uh, really appreciate that. Very informative. Um, I'm still sitting here trying to work out whether I prefer the augmented reality or the mixed reality. I still can't quite decide which one is my favorite. Yeah. You know, once once you get once once you get your head head inside one of these, you won't go back. This is this mixed reality experience is really it's. I mean, you may you get a few few funny looks from uh, on site, but I tell you what, that whole being able to just manipulate your data and stuff, it's absolutely yeah, it's incredible. Awesome. Um, I see Franchise has put his hand up. Would you like to unmute yourself and ask, or would you like to? You can either ask it by audio, or you can just write it in the text the chat box, and then I can read it out. It's up to you, Francho. No, thank you, Matthew. Um, Brent, I agree with Matthew on those two different experiences, um, but I think they each have their application in the field, as you've described. Did you get my audio? Yes. Uh, sorry, yes, I, I just missed the, missed the first part of that, Francois. No, I, I see um, the difference, be, like Matthew said, the difference between the augmented and the um, and those two mediums um, do have a, you'll know the difference or maybe explain the difference in application when you will typically use the one or the other. Yeah, so look, they're very, the, the, the mixed reality is very much a um, safety critical environments, you want to be hands free, you literally you walk in, you, you have your hands free. So when you're working in industrial type environments or on, you know, you can, you can be in noisy environments as well, you can be, um, you know, you've got, got the, the additional sound coming through to your head and it's a lot it's a lot more immersive. Um, so probably, you know, you, you would use it. 
it's being implemented quite a lot on sort of in mining type environments where there's uh, where there's critical shutdowns and things like that on plant and they're wanting to and they're wanting to uh, you know where time is is really a lot of money um, and then they obviously the, the guys need they're using it for um, for pre-planning for during the construction phase uh, and it's it is very much for for hands-free safety critical type environment the the augmented reality is it's a very it's an entry level uh, into this whole use of of virtual bringing your design to the field i mean it's a bring your own device it's a it's it's a subscription just a subscription you pay for an app um, and typically used for the um, on a bigger type rollout. So if you're wanting to maybe have all your all your foremen on site, for example, wanting to be able to visualize their their, their pre pours be able to do their own QA QC inspections before they they can check to see whether all elements have been cast in pre cast. They can scan a QR code on a column next to their pour that's been done. Walk around, have a look, and just see that everything is is um, is there and in, pl in place. And it's not a um, it's not critical that they be hands free. Um, it's not, and yet they can still have that same that that same user experience. Um, and it's a lot more cost effective as well. You can roll it out on a bigger scale. Okay. Um, our next question, if I may, um, is about um, cost. So, what is the different ways of accessing your equipment and, and, and systems? Um, you mentioned about the, the phone app that has a subscription. Um, is your um, some of the equipment for sale? Um, and do you offer rental, rental options on, the, on these tools? Um, so, we've got... We don't offer rental options. We're... Um, it's not a, uh, yeah, it's just not the business model. We, we approach a lot of the stuff that we have as well as sort of high end. It's like the laser scanners and things like that. And we found that by having rental options and services, you, we, we're very careful about competing against the, our clients who have, who have invested in the, in purchasing their equipment. Um, uh -huh. So we very much take a stance of, we are a supplier and very big into our support to make sure that when you do invest in the technology, we support you to make sure that you get the best use out of it, and that even if it goes outside the realms of the of the actual device, of, you know, supporting you and being able to utilize 3D stuff, how to be able to integrate it into common data environments, how to do scan, you know, if you do if it's scanners, for example, we do the training for the scanning to to modeling that whole that whole process, um, but. So you know we don't so we don't rent we we, we, we sell and support. Mm. Yes. As far as cost goes on the hardware side of things, we've got the the XR10. It's, it's about uh, it's safer to give these numbers in dollars. It's about five thousand um, dollars for 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 the headset, and then you've got different subscription. So the subscription for the software Trimble Connect um, mixed reality is about. 35,000 Rand per annum and, yeah. and then on your augmented reality and your bring your own device you're looking at about 15,000 Rand per annum as a subscription for the app but they are also there's different tire I think you can get them on three month subscriptions as well so if you've just got a if you've got a project um, you can yeah you can you know, just run it on a certain project, but you subscribe at, at a lower cost for, for different uh, uh, shorter amounts of time. And the licensing is all cloud-based as well, so you can, you, if you have a company license, for example, you can, um, you can, you can assign it and you can reassign your licenses to different users and, and to have a Trimble Connect account, which is the account which runs everything, your cloud-based common data environment, where all this stuff, that starts off as, it's free, it's pretty much a, anybody can be a user of it you can sign up to that for free and you can have um, 
on a business account, it only costs, I think it's like $100 per year, and you can have 100 projects, 10, your limits are like 10 gigabytes for a single file size, no limit on your data project size, unlimited number of users. There's so much functionality in Trimble Connect, and it's it's a, it's a peanut. It's not, there's not really a, yeah, it's, oh. it's Trimble's tool to get, to connect everything. Sounds good. Um, one last question. Um, this could be relevant for many other users. Um, how does the software that goes with the hardware, especially particularly um, in, in regards with point cloud scanning, LiDAR scanning, um, your, your scanning devices probably come with processing software? Correct. So, uh, so, uh, sorry, you're asking on, did you say the pricing of those things? Or no, uh, just explain just, how the software works. And Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. So what, what's what's pretty cool, so we, we very, our scanning stuff is very unique. Um, on the Trimble uh, uh, scanning side with the software, so we've got a scanner, a Trimble X7 scanner. Um, this is, a, it's the only self-calibrating scanner. It does, it's a, yeah. Not going to go too into the specs, but on the spec sides of it, it's fantastic. It's yeah, uh, best survey grade compensator in, on the market. Anyway, and there's different software options. If you're just doing data collection, you would then look at a software, something called Perspective, which you you run on it. If you're wanting to do, if you work in architecture, engineering, construction, you have a different another software package that you'd run with the same scanner, which brings all the features of being able to the data collection. But in addition, and when I say you know the the features being being able to capture capture your scan data, onboard color, being able to do automatic onboard registration. So as you move from one scan to the other, it's not, and it's not just a, a pre-register, it's a full registration and full refinement of your scan data done in the field. So you can, um, you've got a, by the time you leave site, you've got a fully registered point cloud you can then from your tab from from your scanner you can export your your completely registered point cloud to a uh, e57 las las rcp um, structured e57 unstructured so there's so many industry formats you can export it to um, and then in addition and and then there's also the georeferencing side so it's got a laser pointer on it so you can do so you set it you can set it up you can pick points off your model and you can align your scan data to your model on site which is important because you can also bring your ARCHICAD model, you can bring it you, your IFC file via Trimble Connect. Your scanner also connects to Trimble Connect. So now we're talking about that Trimble Connected construction. Your scanner is connected to the Trimble Connect. Your 3D model you can bring down onto your scanner and you can start to run inspections and you can start comparing your model to your scan data and you can color code the deviations and you can literally, I could go onto site and I can do a full full scan of the site and do a full analysis and say, okay, that there's out, that there's out, that there's out, and show the deviance before I've left site. So there's so much capability that would have been left, usually left for the office that is now capable to be done on site or from data collection and from now this new ability to be able to do data analysis as well. Um, and we, we still do have other office processing software. We've got Trimble Realworks, um, which does some more, has, has got some other, um, what you would expect from any industry sort of um, uh, scan software. But there's so much, there's so much capability on the onboard field software actually that they run it as an office package as well. So the exact same software that runs on your scanner in the field runs also as a as an office based package because you may want to, you know, you just you can do so much. You want to be able to, you don't always want to reload your data onto your site onto your scanner to be able to run some of those computations. You, you know, you might want to do some of it back in the office or revisit it later on. So yeah, there's a, there's a huge, there's, a, there's so much benefit and it all stems from just utilizing that 3D data that we've got that we're already doing. So taking your ARCHICAD model, being able to use it, like putting it onto Trimble Connect and taking that, that, that model and just use a lot, utilizing it in different places. Um, there's so much extra value to all that work you put in into your into your, your model. It can be u used, yeah, for so many other things. No, thank you. Great, great to hear all these 
exciting things and we hope to make changes to our workflows uh, more and more um, and, and get these tools to, to more and more designers and contractors side. Yeah, I think we've, um, we've got, the, the, we're in a fast changing space. There's um, technologies, it's, you know, we, it is a uh, scary to, <laughs> you know, you've, you've got to keep up now. These things are, you know, it's, it's such a, it's a yeah, it's such a disadvantage very quickly if you, if you're not up to, up to date with what's, what's available. Um, there's another question that might be coming up for many users. Um, mm -hmm. The, if you're looking at, um, at architects working in residential market, for example, by in residential, um, are these tools viable for a practice like that? When, when does do, do the investment in these tools and, and so on become viable? So if you're talking from, so across the sort of product portfolio type thing, they, the, 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 the scanning side is definitely, I mean, that's already after the last previous to where I was, was, you know, I've been doing scan to BIM for 10 years and very, you know, very successfully doing the, the, just the resident from a survey point of view, just being able to produce something different to to architects, to being able to offer the service of no longer produce, no longer um, giving 2D drawings, but giving 3D models. And it doesn't yeah. have to be a, it doesn't have to be a huge project. It can be, you, you, you're more efficient doing it that way on any project. So even if it's a small site, a small job, you're still more efficient doing a, a as, as soon as as soon as somebody asks for a cross section or an elevation, it is so much more efficient to just do a scan and a 3D model. Then you can give any cross sections, elevations, it doesn't matter. So from an efficiency point of view, um, it doesn't really matter your job size. Going from scanning to a 3D model is by far the most efficient efficient way. And uh, uh, yeah, I know that from from experience in in the industry, busy doing it myself. The um, on the augmented reality side and the mixed reality side, I mean, the guys at the, you know, these type, these type of um, headsets and stuff, they seem to be very much more applicable to, at the moment, to, to larger industrial type uh, applications. That's where they seem to be finding their feet at the moment. That doesn't mean that there's no place for them in the, um, in the, um, in the, in the smaller sort of residential uh, construction market. I think, even, but specifically for you know, for an architect to be able to like that example that I showed with the with the site vision for an, for an architect to be able to that that was a, a residential home, it was a high end residential home, um, for him to be able to have that different interaction with his clients to be able to show and even from a you know concept to for, from being able to 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 show at concept stage. I mean, the architects put in so much effort up front in doing a, a, a design concept and, and at that stage they you know you're still competing against other people um you know you haven't necessarily won the work yet and to be able to use utilize those tools to be able to show your client well actually you know what this is what it looks like in this place this is my this is my my idea for the view from from this window this is how to be able to give a, a client that sort of trust in that that the design you you're giving is is correct I mean that that's the value is in is immediate. I mean something that, that for the um, cost of a few thousand rand to to rent an AI app for a few for a month to to it could cost you winning or losing a project. Uh, you know, as I say said, you've got um, if you're not up to date, you, you're at such a risk at the moment by not being up to date in this fast moving technology space. If, if you're not up to date, you you are at risk that somebody you know. You fall, fall behind very quickly. Right. No, thank you. Thanks, Francois. Um, are there any other questions?
Um, Kevin is asking, how much does a 3D scan compared to a conventional, conventional surveyor's um, service cost? Uh, yeah, it's, that's, it really depends on the project. Um, it, in most cases, nowadays, from working in survey practice for, for a while as well, the most projects are done with scanning anyway, even if you ask for, even if you ask for a traditional 2D plan, you may offer, put in two prices. The, the, the price is not, they're, they're pretty similar because it's so much more efficient. It, this, it, the, the efficiency in, in getting to that final product is you're going to be, you're going to spend a whole lot less time doing the work to get to the final result. So your cost is, yes, there's a higher investment cost in, in the hardware, um, but your cost to actually produce the final product is so much excluding the hardware, your time. If you had to do a, a, just a high-end residential home, we go back to that example. If you had to do it, as soon as you get asked to do an internal, external, or a cross-section, um, you're going to be at least four or five times less, spend less time trying to produce that if you, you scan, to, scan to model. So, But then there's obviously your... Your, there is the hardware cost you have to consider. So it will cost you more, but it's marginally different. In some cases, you actually don't have the option. We used to say, well, you know, you can, this is what you want. You don't, um, a lot of the time we didn't even offer offer two different two different methods. It was, that was the way we surveyed. That was what, that was the deliverable. It's, it's not going to become a, it shouldn't be, there shouldn't be a price difference. It should just be, that's what, that's the deliverable. That's how you get there. It's um, the the days of it being very specialized, and it's something that you you know needs to you pay a whole lot more for. I think is is changing. I think it's it's just the way we it's the way we do things. It's the way the way it should be done. It's, and I don't think the costs are, are for the service are hugely different. Thanks, Brent. Um, if I could just add on to that, uh, it it sounds very similar to the pricing model that uh, that Graphisoft SA has. That while people may say that the perpetual costs, um, the upfront costs, might be substantial to some, um, you know, the value that you're getting out of it is also equating to that cost. And over time, the uh, the software, or sorry, the hardware does a better job at getting a return on investment over time. Um, you know, often you'll spend a large upfront cost uh, to buy a product. It doesn't have to be a piece of software or hardware, but just a product in general. And over time, it will pay itself off because time is money. And if you're saving time, you're saving money, and that's the return on your investments. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally, it's being, you know, it's, it's not even a case of, it's also, you have, you just have to keep up. You, you won't, if you, if you do it, old traditional methods, you're not, you're not efficient. Um, and being not, not, not being efficient is costs, costs you money. So it's only so long that you can stay inefficient for. So, you know, you will, the people, you just become, you, you'll be overtaken. Um, it's, it's just the nature of the, the times we live in. Taking, you know. Yes, Francois. So I'm going to maybe ask questions that would be applicable to the people that couldn't make it tonight. Um, so, um, Brent, do you uh, does your Trimble scanner of different scanners uh, do you offer different scanners to do different jobs or that is uh, more ideal folk uh, sit, uh, suited for this or that type of job yeah we, we, we do there's definitely different scanners suited for different types of jobs and different types of environments um, the, the main you know we we have two different types of scanners we have a, a, a Little X7, nice little compact, lightweight thing. It does 90% of what you, 90% of what you would need any type of scanning scanning to do. You can use it in any type of environment. Um, 
accuracy around two millimeters. If you're now looking for something, you're going to re real precision stuff, if you're wanting to look at uh, really precise industrial floors or those type of applications, yes, we would have another static scanner, which is sits in the millimeter, sub-millimeter range. Um, and we've got long range scanners as well, which sort of scan up to 800 meters. Um, uh, and that's mainly for sort of a mining type environment as well, for quarries, that type of thing. But the main difference comes in the, the difference between static scanning and slam scanning and uh, photogrammetry. So those are three, three different things that produce point clouds, um, completely very different technologies. And yes, they used in the wrong context can be cause problems. So very important to understand sort of all the, the you know, the different types. So, you know, slam being your, your um, mobile, very fast to capture data. Yes, you can walk around and you can cap capture information very quickly. But you also need to look at the risks of what your processing software is able to do, automated extraction, that type of thing. How much time do you lose in the office? Um, is the environment very suitable for, for SLAM, which is simultaneous localization and mapping this technology? Um, some environments are suitable to it, some aren't. Big open spaces, not so suitable. Um, also very, very tight spaces, lots of in and out, also not suitable. Um, can be very quick and efficient in certain cases. Um, photogrammetry as well, you know, very, uh, very popular. Um, but also, is it is it applicable? Does it have the accuracies that you require for for your project specifically? And you know, terrain modeling that type of thing, I would be very very happy. But is it, if you're looking heights of buildings, sight lines, those type of things, is it is it really going to you know? Can you afford to make a mistake? That's what you got to ask yourself. Is you know your but choosing 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 a, a more cost effective solution may not produce the required results to and you know what is what is what are the cost implications of getting it wrong um, but yeah definitely and we can advise on all those type of things so if you've got projects specific projects that you're looking at and and we even help with sort of specifications if you want to specify scanning there's lots of scan to BIM to, you know applications where people say well we want LOD 200 for this building and that's the entire specification that's all you get and there's so much, you know, that can go into, you need to go into more depth about uh, inside ceilings, sizes of pipes, pipes less than one and a half inches. There's so many cost implications of giving such a broad um, uh, spec to a scan to scan to BIM project. So <coughs> we help with templates on what to ask for when, uh, when you get uh, a, a request for that type of thing or what to put out there to make sure that you get the most cost-effective um, uh, bids back from if you if you're asking for sort of scans of BIM projects and things like that. So we can also advise we can help advise on sort of the technology you know and 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 process and what to ask for because we know what costs what affects um, the, the whole workflow and the process and what, what's you know what's important. Okay, great, thank you. Hey guys, um, I'm going to call it at that point. Um, thanks everybody for attending this evening and thanks to Brent for making the time to deliver this presentation. I'm sure many of the people watching this uh, recording will have gained a lot of insight to the, from your session. Um, and yeah, if you want to get hold of uh, Brent, um, I hope you took a screenshot, otherwise you can get it from the recording a little bit later on. Um, and yeah, he's looking forward to hearing from all of you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Matthew. Thanks very much, Graphisoft, and thanks to all your attendees. Thank you very much, guys.